okay so welcome to my channel and today I'm going to talk about the EO restorative and protective conditioners and why they work well as leave-ins as detang great detanglers great moisturizers and also as a gel alternative now it may not work for everybody but for me these two particular conditioners work for me EO has other a leave-in moisturizer doesn't work for me but I know I have looked gone through the ingredients list done my research and this is what I believe or why I believe they work for me and for my hair and it's worth your while just going to try them out first of all we need to know that they try to keep their products as organic and as natural as possible The company is family owned and they are certified organic farmers. And so you'll find that when I go through the ingredients with you, a lot of their products are plant-based. And that is in itself is a great thing, especially for those of you who are trying to move away from silicones and sulfates. I don't tell anyone not to use silicone or sulfates because I know that I initially thought silicones maybe didn't work for me or things like that, but they do. So my thing is you figure out what works well for your hair through experimentation, through research and through watching videos like mine. So these are the two products, the restorative and protective, and I'm just going to go through each of the ingredients in each bottle and tell you what the functions are. Now on application, this is what my hair looks like wet, or not when I say wet, because the products are not really wet, they're really oil-based. It gives me this wavy, slick, sleek look, and works well as a gel alternative. And then when once dry, it gives me this smooth, soft, silky feeling so my ponytails or whatever I do makes my hair feel just soft sleek smooth the hair lies down no flyaways it looks neat and is manageable just a few terms for you to read through um, as I read the ingredients list so that you have an understanding of what each term means in terms of the conditioners first of all you need to know that both conditioners contain almost the same ingredients however one is protective and one is restorative so there are going to be some additional ingredients that provide protection in one in one condition and and the other restorative ingredients so I'm going to go through slowly and where there are some differences I will bring that to your attention but the point is to realize that one conditioner is protective it's for color treated hair it's going to protect your hair from the environmental stresses like the Sun the wind it's going to protect your hair in terms of if it's damaged in terms of the restorative, if you have damaged hair, it's going to work on that. And just to give you an idea that there are two different conditions with the same amounts of ingredients. So first off, the both products start off with purified water. Then we have vegetable glycerine, which is a humectant and adds slip. Then they have organic jojoba, which is an emollient. Then we have bentrimonium methosulfate, which is a which is conditioning, cetyryl alcohol, which is conditioning, has conditioning properties. It's light. It's a lightweight conditioning ingredient that gives a dry, smooth feel when rubbed in, as you saw my ponytail. Then there's glycerin, steroid, which is conditioning and gives a dry, smooth feel when rubbed in. Once again, great for ponytails, great as a gel alternative. Then you have organic coconut, um, oil which is in the protective which gives that same dry smooth feel when rubbed in and then we have olive oil organic olive oil in the restorative
Now both products may contain the same ingredients, but they are they appear differently in in each of them. So whereas this one had coconut, the the restorative has olive oil. Yet the protective does have all olive oil as well, further down on the ingredients list. So we have sterile alcohol which is in both of them, it's a lubricant, it's a thickener, it's an emollient, it conditions with giving a velvet feel, it's non-greasy, gives added weight for curls. So remember, that's a great thing about it. Then you have cetyl alcohol, which is an emollient, thickener, increases foam, it's non-greasy, binds the other ingredients. Pathanol, which is vitamin B5, it's a great leave-in, it's a humectant, it's an emollient, it's a moisturizer and penetrates the cortex. Both products contain pathanol, cetyl alcohol, sterile alcohol. They both contain organic olive oil, which is a moisturizer, it gives slip and is conditioning. Next on the list for both conditioners is Bentrimonium Chloride, which is used for detangling and as an anti-static ingredient and emulsifier. Hence the nice sleek ponytail my hair lies down. Then there's Hibiscus for the um, protective uh, conditioner, which is an antioxidant. It improves skin and cell formation. Also, be Behenalconium Chloride, which is in the restorative, is a preservative and is cautionary, but is used in combination with cetyl alcohol, which is a, like an emollient, a lubricant, so it's not as caustic. So that is a, a little alert there. Now for the protective and for the restorative, there's go to cola, which helps circulation, blood circulation for the prevention of hair loss. So it, this helps with hair growth, stimulates hair, hair growth. For the protective, we have the green tea color protecting complex for the protective uh, moisture conditioner. It's an antioxidant, it's anti-inflammatory, and as you can see, protects the hair from the elements, um, helps it from conditioners, uh, well, other products that may strip it. So that's a good thing. Then we have, again, go to cola. And then um, we have for the protective sunflower seed extract which is a mild cleanser it has mild cleansing properties leaves the hair feeling soft and smooth and also protects the hair from heat styling then we have the dry hair complex made from the from the lime fruit extract which is softens the hair and the scalp gives vitality to hair nourishes the hair and the scalp soothes the scalp acts as a sebum substitute. Now the hydrolyzed quinoa, apart from making the hair look and smooth and feel silky, it, can, it has a protective barrier to protect the hair from environmental stresses and this is in the protective, retains moisture in the hair and provides nutrients to the hair. Other protection, offers protection, sorry, repair, moisturization is enhanced with this um, hydrolyzed quinoa. It helps with reparation, repairing, moisturization is, is enhanced. It helps, it penetrates the, the, the hair shafts and helps with um, to repair damage and also to protect the cuticles. Now, the same thing uh, for the restorative is the avocado fruit. And as you know, the avocado fruit extract has Vitamins A, D, and B6, magnesium, copper, iron. The avocado fruit also contains amino acids and folic acid, all which are extremely essential for hair growth and nourishment. It is also a rich source of lecithin or lecithin, which gives it good penetrative qualities. It is also known to have natural sunscreen properties that can protect the hair and scalp from the damage caused by the harmful UVA and UVB rays. For the protective, we also have EO Special Organic Hair Blend of Aloe Vera, 
which we saw also in the restorative but further up on the ingredients list which controls hair loss because of its stimulating hair growth properties then in the restorative we have fig fruit extract which is an antioxidant anti-inflammatory antibiotic in the in the protective we have organic chamomile extract which heals inflamed skin we also have organic calendula extract, which is, soothes the skin and promotes healing. For the restorative, we have fenugreek seed extract, which is a protein restores health, hair growth. And now we're going to talk about the EO's essential oil blend, which is a bergamot. Uh, essential oil which is an antibiotic it's antiseptic it's antifungal and it's healing as we get closer down the list of ingredients we notice a lot of antifungal healing sort of ingredients because remember these two conditioners are protective and restorative so they're going to protect you from any sort of um, bacteria if you have any sores in your hair, they have some healing um, ingredients and things like that. Now that the bergamot is in the protective and then in the restorative, like I said earlier, those hydrolyzed quinoa protein. Now this is further down the list on the restorative, which is it has a film. It forms like a film on the hair, which uh, retains moisture. Um, the benefits of this film forming effect is that the hydrolyzed quinoa also has firming effects and penetrative effects which help to prevent hair damage um, hair damage and sort of controls the damage and repairs it and then we have geranium essential oils for the protective which is an estrogen antibacterial and antimicrobial and a to tonic so it stimulates circulation growth hair growth and things uh, cell formation things like that for the restorative, you have EO's organic blend of aloe vera, as we saw earlier on in the protective, which is cleansing, antiseptic, antioxidant, and contains vitamins. Grapefruit essential oil in the protective conditioner is antibacterial, antiseptic, also a tonic. Chamomile, as we had seen earlier in the, penet in the protective, is now in the restorative, lower down, which is we know is, is healing, helps inflamed skin, heals it. Now for the protective again, we have whole leaf essential oil, which is an antibacterial and antifungal, and it gives us floral, fresh, sweet, woody smell. Now this is something about the both conditioners or the, the EO conditioners. They have this sort of plant-like fragrance. I'm not particularly fond of it, but it's subtle and it's there and eventually through the notes sort of fade away during the day but, but not totally so if you don't like those smells that may be an issue but it's not overpowering then we have organic calendula which is soothes the skin promotes healing and this is in the restorative i believe we, we found we met it earlier on in the protective then palmarosa essential oil in the protective it's an antiseptic antiviral it's hydrating and it contains this rose fragrance and it's an estrogen now for the restorative we have organic white tea leaf extract which is an antioxidant then for the protective we have patchouli oil which is an antiseptic is anti-inflammatory it's antifungal and has healing properties then for the restorative eo has an essential oil blend of lavender oil which is great for hair growth it's it has regenerative properties it helps with scalp problems it's an antiseptic then again we meet chamomile as we saw earlier on in restorative is now in the protective and as we know chamomile heals inflamed skin okay it's healing we also have rose oil in the protective which is another sort of earthy sort of not earthy but woodsy sort of to me fragrance which is in the protective conditioner and as you know, rose oil fortifies and revitalizes hair. Rose oil also prevents breakage. It adds sheen, improves the body and texture of hair. It strengthens hair, the hair shafts and heals 
itchy scalp, and also is a fragrance. In the restorative, we have the orange essential oil. It is de it detoxifies. It's co it's collagen for forming. It assists the hair by regulating its natural oils or sebum, and it's also a protein oil. Then we have in the protective rosewood oil, which gives that woodsy smell. It's also this woodsy smell also is said to be some sort of antidepressant. It helps depressive moods, so it will be uplifting. Um, rosewood is also said to be analgesic. It's also an aphrodisiac. It's an antiseptic. It's an antiviral and st and has stimu stimulating properties. So for good for hair growth, rejuvenation of cells, etc. And also for the restorative, we see chamomile oil again, essential oil, which we know is healing. It heals inflamed skin. Then for the protective, we have gua hydroxypropyl trimonium chloride, which is a conditioning ingredient and also gives that gummy feel to these products. Slightly sticky effect, which is great for um, flyaways and smoothening down and weighing down the hair. Then we have honey, which is in the restorative. And as you know, honey is a humectant, smooths the cuticles so the hair feels soft and looks shiny. And all these contribute to your hair feeling soft, silky, and also why I feel it works well as an alternative to, gel, to a gel. In this case, it's softer. It gives you a softer, smoother, silky feel than would most other gels. We now get to the final ingredients on both products. And for the protective, we have Centrimonium Bromide, which provides thickening, softening, and conditioning. It also has antimicrobial, antistatic, it's an emulsifier, it's hair conditioning, and it's a surfactant. Now on the restorative, we have Gua Hydroxypropylyl Trimonium chloride, which I mentioned earlier in the protective, it's conditioning and it gives that gummy feeling, and that's why they both work well. As is allowing your hair to be anti-static, lays down, smoothens, and things like that. Then for both of them, we have retinyl palmitate, which is a form of vitamin A. And as you know, vitamin A is is conditioning, it's an antioxidant, it improves collagen production, enhances the appearance and feel of hair, it increases suppleness, it gives sheen and body to the hair, it improves hair texture that has been physically or chemically damaged. They both have tocopherol, which is vitamin E, and, and it, which uh, contributes towards capillary growth, which is like contributes to hair growth, it prevents split, can prevent split ends, helps he, heal hair that has been damaged by excessive use of hair dryers, and it cures dry hair as well. Then we have amodimethicone, which we all know is a silicone, and there's a caution around this because of the fact that it's a silicone. However, it is in such small quantities that it's at the bottom of the ingredients list and sometimes manufacturers cannot do without it. It probably has some uh, sort of preservative uh, property that is needed and couldn't be used, found in any other, let's say, ingredients. So it's just a small amount. Then we have sodium phytate. And sodium phytate is said to be a chelating agent, a stabilizer, helps in stabilization of the, all the ingredients or certain ingredients in the product, keeping it from, say, becoming rancid or anything like that. So it, 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 it induces some sort of stability agent. And it is also said to be... It is also said to be a preservative 
and as you know some of these preservative there is a, con a caution because it could be uh, caustic on the skin or it, it could be irritate so then we have dimethicone which is a good heavy silicone it's in the smallest amounts it's right at the bottom so it is safe it is it, 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 it when I say safe for those of you who do not like silicone it's in very in, in an amount that it is is you can't even it's not going to harm you or hurt you in terms of if you are scared of build up and things like that otherwise if you like silicones more power to you you will love that then we have phenoxyl oxyethanol phenoxyethanol which is a preservative it's an oily preservative it also has a rose smell and then we have ethyl hexylyl glycerin this is a synthetic ingredient mostly used as a skin conditioner so it's sort of conditions your scalp and as well as your hair so as you know all the pro all the ingredients that may cause some sort of concern are way at the bottom and the percentage in each conditioner is minute so nothing to worry about so what I want to say now is that these two conditioners provide a whole lot of goodness now even though all or almost all the, the ingredients here are plant-based are organic are basically harmless to your hair and your skin and just the last few that are preservatives um, may have some sort of cautionary uh, you, you need to be sort of aware that they're in there and they might be caustic on your skin or things like that it, they're full of goodness for example they are anti antioxidants they're antiseptic they're antibacterial they're anti-inflammatory they're antibiotic they call they protect the color in your hair they condition they're great detanglers they're great gel alternatives with the, all those products the gummy products the gummy ingredients the sleek softening anti-static help as gel alternatives great great as hair growth stimulants they help hair repair, um, they repair damage, they're lubricants, they're moisturizers, they make your hair smooth without feeling wet, this makes it feel dry, gives your hair silky texture. They, you can use it for those of you who have wonderful curls, for added weight to give you that cur curly um, shingling effect. They give shine with all those essential oils. They provide they, they, they provide anti-static quality, so no flyaways, smoother looks. They're anti-static, as I said. They are cleanse, great gentle cleansers. They are emollients. They give great slips or great in, as detangling. They have healing properties. They nourish the hair and the scalp. They have penetrative qualities. They penetrate it, penetrate the cortex, nourishing it. They protect the hair from the environmental stresses like the elements, the sun, UV rays that are not good for us, those that are not good for us, and they also are tonic. They work as stimulants. They stimulate hair growth, stimulate circulation, which helps to carry nutrients to the hair. I mean, I love these products. They may not work for everybody, but I love them. And I think they're full of goodness. They can't hurt you. Nothing is perfect, so there will always be something in there that you may, may or may not like. But they're worth a try. And please remember, the information I have given you is my own research. It, EO did not provide me with the information about each of the ingredients. I went online. I went to tightlycurly.com's uh, dictionary. I used Google. I used other cosmetic dictionaries. I did my research. So please don't call EO and say, you said this about your products. You say you have this in there and this is what it says. Please, I just did my own research based on my experimentation with my hair, going online, looking at cosmetic di directories, reading the MSDS, which is the um, sort of like the template that tells you about a particular ingredients, what's good, is bad, it's, you know, ugly. 
And so I just advise you to do the same. And I think you can use what I have done and look and see if those same products are in your conditioner, or your shampoos, which you will find are in there. They all have most of the basic, basic emollients and humectants in them. So thanks for watching. What are your thoughts on this product, the ingredients and whatever else you are using? Please do share. Thanks for watching.